only reason that I'm even making this is because you went after kids. My kids, specifically. They're not his kids! This is baby daddy number one and two! All the kids he has brought up in this video were not his kids. Addict Andy is baby daddy number three. People have used the death of my son to go after me with it in order to hurt me. This is his wife's son. He is purposely framing this as they are his kids so that he can use these kids as a deflection to criticism. And yet I'm the sick one. He married Sloppy in December of 2012. The article on this accident happened December of 2015. He was only married to her for three years at this point. So for him to sit here and pretend that this is his kid to garner more sympathy is really disgusting. The 10 year old was unalived at the hands of a 14 year old friend. And what is your Sloppy wife doing allowing her 10 year old son to hang out with a 14 year old so why am i not allowed to point out that that's irresponsible that's not me attacking the child that's me attacking your sloppy wife's parenting i can't believe that he actually released this video does he listen to himself he's so bad at lying in the last video we covered a couple of fake christian conservatives and they continue to perpetuate their lies and i was surprised to see how many lies were in it and how many people fell for it just because he decided to frame it a certain way therefore it's true when you could just watch the video for yourself and see that these claims are not true so we're gonna go through them keep in mind as you're watching this that addict andrew wilson and his sloppy wife rachel wilson both have a long history of lying including about how long they were married among other things that i explained in previous videos me and my infinite wisdom as addict andrew puts it didn't even want to make this video but the thing is he makes some pretty abhorrent claims considering that i'm pretty outspoken against human rights violations especially against children and have been long before there was even a discussion about pornography with the horrible things that happen with it the market that it opens for predating on children etc trying to say this in the most youtube friendly way possible but yeah it's pretty much a spit in my face for someone to act like i would uh, attack children especially when i received all the flack for it you know i was the canary in the coal mine and opened the conversation about adult entertainment how it affects women and children to begin with i'm not the first person to ever speak on it but in terms of the discourse about it on youtube i am venti attacks me and my, my wife, wife through the death of 10 year old sick woman one of these creators Brittany venti has decided in her infinite wisdom that the she wanted to go after my children. These aren't even his children. This is his wife's daughter and his wife's son. The daughter that Sloppy Rachel promoted her TikTok, that's one of her eldest daughters. That's from baby daddy number one. And the son, the 10 year old he's talking about that passed away, that's from baby daddy number two. It actually even says it in the article that I showed in the video and linked in the description that this was baby daddy number two's kid. This kid doesn't even have addict Andy's last name. So we're not even 20 seconds and he's already lying. These aren't aren't even his biological children, so keep that in mind. And again, if you watch the video, I never at any point attack the children. I comment on their parenting specifically. In fact, I told people to not harass the children. Or whatever insane timelines they come up with or insane allegations or whatever. I don't fucking care about any of that. It doesn't mean anything to me. But I do care when insane people target my children. My kids have never been on my stream. I've never shown them to the public. I don't show any pictures of them. So this is the kid that he's claiming is his child, but it's actually baby daddy number two's child with sloppy Rachel. So yeah, I guess technically he's right. He's not showing his kid, his biological kid, but then he conveniently claims that it's his son in the video, even though the son doesn't have his last name and is clearly from baby daddy number two, because in both of the articles, it talks about the dad's reaction. It's a different guy and the kid has a different last name who would try to come after me by going after my children, that's a super dangerous person and a lunatic, literally a lunatic. I went out of my way in the video to censor everything. I even censored their names. Meanwhile, his sloppy wife is out here on Twitter blasting their health issues, blasting what they even had for breakfast in the morning. Uh, again, I don't care. If these people go ham about me and Rachel all day, it doesn't mean anything to me, but. He says it doesn't mean anything to him, but he was busy having a melty and simp cast chat and talking about how his wife is a genius academic and how dare we talk about her like that. My wife not only attempted to sell my daughter's virginity to Groypers, that she succeeded and she my, my daughter was deflowered by, by a Groyper or some shit, okay? And further, 
that there's blackmail on yours truly. Let's go over what their evidence is. Their evidence is that Rachel made a bunch of tweets joking around uh, with some guys from the AF community on Twitter publicly. They have shown no proof at all to this allegation that her virginity was offered up online and then she was deflowered by somebody. Prove it, motherfucker. Prove it. So he says it's just a joke. Here are the tweets from Sloppy marketing her daughter to said groypers, and it reads, quote, She's 98% dream wife for a groyper. No tats, no body count, traditional wife, mother gender role. In fact, she actually gets mad when one of the groypers doesn't want her daughter over the nose ring and says, but the nose stud is a deal breaker, whatever. Now, my daughter did date a man um, who she was interested in, and she was introduced via my wife. I see absolutely no problem with that at all. I don't see how anybody else could. He doesn't see how anybody else could have a problem with a mother pimping out their daughter to gripers. Hey, she has zero body count. Do you want to date her? Like bragging about her virginity. That's very creepy. And it's going to attract a lot of predators. A lot of people have a problem with the way she did that. And it was proven to be a bad idea. Said griper blackmailed them. He literally says this on tape, which I've shown in the prior videos. Right. Which led to people harassing my daughter on her Instagram page. Okay, so he is saying that me talking about that is the reason his daughter's getting harassed. No, your sloppy wife shared her TikTok on Twitter and it's still up. The audacity to imply that I'm the reason your daughter, your wife's daughter, is getting harassed is ridiculous. Here's your sloppy wife posting her baking a cake on Twitter and it's still up. Promoting her TikTok with her name. Here's another one with Sloppy promoting her daughter's account on Twitter. As of recording, people can still find it and I'm being blamed when I'm the one who actually censored her name, unlike your sloppy wife. And it's okay for uh, people to meet each other online. That's how most people meet who date in a social setting. Yeah, this isn't just anyone online. This was specifically Groypers. And I explained in the last video, the Groyper that Sloppy is marketing her daughter to, this same Groyper ended up blackmailing them. So yeah, clearly there is something wrong with it. Here's the thing, Addict Andy can just lie all day and say that things didn't happen. And he has a history of lying, for example, about how long he was married to his sloppy wife. So you really do have to take everything he says with a grain of salt and just use your critical thinking skills based on the evidence that I've shown. He's also lied about other things, like he said that his wife never said that they were married for 16 years, and then she clearly did multiple times on Twitter. He didn't say anything about porn. They just assumed it. They literally just assumed that for no reason at all. And by the way, what a horrible and sick thing to assume. They just instantly assume she must have slept with him and he must have, have revenge porn. I did neglect the debate. I didn't do the debate because I don't, you know, I don't know what people like this are going to do. It's just so wacky to think that people would be intimate in relationships. Your daughter, sorry, your wife's daughter talks about uh, getting abused and assaulted for two years. You know, why would you put that you were abused and assaulted for two years by your ex. Pretty sure she's talking about SA here, so it's really not that crazy to say that. It's just so wacky of me to have critical thinking skills and uh, think, hmm, what would a griper on the trad LARP side of the manosphere that got with your daughter, sorry, your wife's daughter, um, over your sloppy wife bragging she's a virgin, what would he blackmail her and you guys over? Hmm, maybe the thing you were marketing her with. Guys, literally there was no blackmail, even though I went on stream and said that there was by the ex-fiance and that he would ruin her life. Literal gaslighting. Puff your way through cunts. it. <laughs> Addict Andy here whipping out his next cigarette. Can't go one video without his addiction. Brittany Venti showed on her stream a, when you're, you know, when you're 21, <laughs> or sorry, when you're, uh, you know, you date a guy from New York and you almost marry him, blah, 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 blah. Just so that everybody understands the troll fell for the troll. <laughs> what a fucking idiot. This is from Rachel's daughter's TikTok, and it says, Me, when I remember, I really almost married a 27-year-old man from New York that I only met three times because my parents wanted me to. Does that sound like a joke to you guys? Does that sound like satire? Because if it is, what is the punchline? What's the joke? 
She even says in the caption, I was freshly 18, by the way. She was 18 when she met the Groiper. This is based on true events. You're just going to say, oh, it was just a joke, haha. -ha. Then how come your daughter privated her TikTok if it's just a joke? It's kind of weird if it's just a joke, isn't it? My daughter has a, a channel on Instagram, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. I have no interest in doing that. But she does mostly satire, okay? And when she saw that this was going on, she put this out, um, I don't know, what, 2023 or something like that, when they were trying to come after me with these things at the first of the year. He's claiming that the daughter is a satirist. I checked through all of her Instagram posts. There's no satire on there. None of them. All of them are just normal Instagram posts with normal captions of like, hey, feeling cute, you know, that sort of thing. And with her TikTok, there really wasn't any satire either. It was just her being a normal girl trying to get views on TikTok, doing trends, cosplaying as Misa from Death Note, lip singing to music, you know, things like that. Bitch, you know I'm sexy. Ugh, don't call, just text me. Bitch, you slow, can't get on my screen. There's really nothing comedic about her Instagram that was linked to that TikTok or the TikTok in of itself. So he's just retroactively lying. So he's just trying to say that this retroactively was satire when it wasn't. There's no indication of it anywhere. There's no punchline. And none of her posts seemed like they were for comedy. It seemed like a normal, average 18-year-old's Instagram account. She's 20 now, but it's been up for a few years. Uh, she put that out to make fun of them. That's it. Just put that shit out, and she was making fun of them. <laughs> now, you are such a liar. He's just he's just pretending it didn't happen. This is gaslighting 101. It was just a joke, guys. It was just satire. Is he gonna say that this is fake too? Her talking about her getting abused and assaulted by a weird guy for two years, or the interesting thing here is if that's not true, and I'm telling you a story, or I'm giving you some kind of aggrandized lie. As you are. these people would claim. Your wife's daughter, that you claim is your daughter, turned 18 at the end of March. That same year, in 2021, within a few weeks, your sloppy wife marketed her virginity to a bunch of creepy groipers on the internet. The timeline matches exactly what she says in the caption here. So. You can pretend it's a joke all you want. There was no satire on her page, nothing indicating it, and there was no punchline. You're lying, and you knew we were going to say you're lying, so that's why you're saying that. When I went on her daughter's TikTok, and I saw that she had posted about having an eating disorder, it's sad that she had to go through that in such a hard time in her life. And it's a really serious issue because it implies that there's probably something going on in the household. You don't just randomly develop an ED. It's really unfortunate that her daughter is a victim of her mother's own lack of maternal instinct. The reason that she had an ED- Hold on, did he clip that together out of context? Hold on. There's TikTok and I saw that she had posted about having an eating disorder. It's sad that she had to go through that in such a hard time in her life. And it's a really serious issue because it implies that there's probably something going on in the household. You don't just randomly develop an ED. And I really hope that she's healed and recovered from that. But you know Sloppy's cooking must be bad if her daughter literally rather starve herself than to eat her food. Like Sloppy also publicly posted this daughter's name on Twitter this is the along with her other children on several occasions. So I just want to make it clear that the only reason that I know about this and am able to talk about this is because because of sloppy publicizing this information herself. It's really unfortunate that her daughter is a victim of her mother's own lack of maternal instinct and poor judgment. So please do not harass the daughter. The da so that was not in the context of what he put it in. It was not in regard to his wife's daughter's eating disorder. So that was just straight up out of context. The reason that she had an eating disorder is because she went for years with an undiagnosed condition called POTS. And if these people had done any of their due diligence, the same thing they accused Rolo Tomasi of not doing, and had gone through her Instagram like they claimed they did, if they weren't just looking for dirt, oh, look how he defends Rolo. What she had to say with her satirical videos, you would know oh, really? that she often makes videos referencing the fact that she had pots. And then so when I went through the daughter's Instagram, his wife's daughter's Instagram, she had no satirical videos at all. 
And she had no mention of POTS either. And I did do my due diligence. And also love how he defends uh, Grandma Tomasi here. Someone who fell for fake emails twice and didn't bother to fact check them and spread lies on podcasts. Like that's the fool you're defending? Someone who also lies and makes things up about the people he doesn't like? I actually did check through the Instagram. I checked through the TikTok. There's never a mention of it from what I saw. Also, the reason that I think he's gaslighting, POTS gives you nausea. And that might contribute to why you have an issue with your appetite. POTS is when your heart rate goes up and when you stand, you kind of have like a circulation issue, hence the purple feet on the right. And they'll do things to try to get the blood on this half of their body, like wear uh, certain socks, compression socks, or like how I do with sitting in a pretzel to keep the blood flow up here. My feet are never really on the floor. When you look at this screenshot here, she talks about having a body check from two years ago, that has nothing to do with POTS. I'm not a doctor, but um, I fail to see how body checking is POTS. Body checking involves a person repeatedly seeking information about their body shape or size using scales, mirrors, or other methods. Some girls even use uh, their camera to take photos of themselves in like weird positions to like body check, to like make themselves feel skinny or get people to tell them that they're skinny because it strokes their ego, like Eugenia Cooney, for example. This behavior may become unhealthy and lead to eating disorders. Like having a food aversion and nausea is one thing and then doing body checks because you feel like you don't look skinny enough is a completely other thing. Now, I've never brought any of this up because it's not anybody's business. Well, clearly uh, your sloppy wife has no problem bringing up your kids' disorders and what they have for breakfast. So his actual daughter that has his last name, she posts about her all the time. Oh, she takes probiotics, she has autism, here's what she had for breakfast. So she has no problem with sharing and oversharing. And you're telling me that nowhere I search can I find anything about this other daughter on TikTok having pots? And you're claiming it's on her Instagram and it's nowhere to be found? And then she privates her TikTok so you can't even fact check it. And I see no evidence to back up the fact that his daughter, uh, his wife's daughter has POTS. Eating disorder wasn't because of some kind of mental illness. So then why is she body checking? Like it makes zero sense. They're just brought up as an attack to try to spin this kind of narrative to try to defame her and hurt her in order to hurt me. At every turn in the video, I always criticize the parenting and the parents. I never made this about attacking the kids. I even went out of my way to say, don't harass them. I censored all the information, more than his sloppy wife ever did with promoting the daughter's TikTok. So if anybody was causing harm to your wife's daughter, it's you guys. And that's fucking sick. You know what's really sick? It's when you use someone else's kids that aren't even your biological children as a shield from criticism. And then you go in this video while you're trying to uh, farm sympathy from people, lying about me attacking your kids that aren't even your kids, they're your wife's baby daddy's kids, and using them as a means to deflect criticism, and I'm the sick one. Meanwhile, his sloppy wife is parading around his stepdaughter and her virginity and zero body count to a bunch of creepy men on the internet, but I'm the reason they're getting harassed. I'm the one sharing too much information about them. The amount of gaslighting is absolutely unreal. Look at what she's saying. I'm like, yeah, so what? It's all lies. Who gives a shit? That's why I don't care. Never cared. It's all bullshit. If what I'm By the way, never at any point in this video does he mention the marriage certificate. And I heard someone say that, oh, like it wasn't his. Addict Dandy here is making it pretty hard when he just lies about anything and you can't believe anything he says. So let's say I did get something wrong. It would be pretty hard to correct myself because he just retroactively lies about everything. But yeah, what a happy coincidence it is that this marriage application that he had with another woman that overlapped in the time where he had uh, children with Sloppy. What a coincidence that it has his exact same name, same birthday, same other details I had to blank out for YouTube. You know, what a happy, improbable coincidence that would be, right? You can't believe anything he says. He just gaslights and lies. Saying isn't true. Daughter can come out and say whatever she wants. She's not under my yoke. She doesn't live here in my house. Again, he's claiming that this is his daughter when it's his wife's daughter. She dated a guy for a little while. It didn't work out. No revenge pornography of any kind made up i don't even think there was a physical relationship of any kind think but if there was the burden's on you to show the proof of that not on me so he doesn't even know he's not even sure about it himself yet i'm crazy and conspiring i can't believe that he actually released this video does he listen to himself the only reason that i'm even making this is because you went after kids my kids specifically they're not his kids this is baby daddy number one and two 
All the kids he has brought up in this video were not his kids. Addict Andy is baby daddy number three. He is purposely framing this as they are his kids so that he can use these kids as a deflection to criticism. The whole narrative of selling her virginity on any it's all bullshit. Literally right here, he showed it earlier in his video, body count zero and bragging about her virginal status. Like I said, just constant gaslighting. I can't do anything about you wanting to believe it's real. Now, moving over to my son. It's I, not his this son. This is the first time that people have used the death of my son to go after me with it in order to hurt me. He's just straight up saying my son. He's not saying my wife's son, which it is. In the article, it literally shows the kid's biological dad's reaction and he has a different last name. I understand that step parents sometimes will take the kid from the other marriage under their wing, but in this specific instance, this is very calculated. This is on purpose so that he can deflect criticism. Say horrible things, things like this. I have a thick skin. But in this case, Venti brought him up to show that Rachel was somehow negligent. The story gets more interesting when she marries her first husband, baby daddy number two, who she has a child with that ends up passing away in a very tragic accident that in turn makes Sloppy look like an extremely irresponsible parent. You can see that I linked the news articles in the description. Both of them are from Fox. And it says the 10 year old was unalived at the hands of a 14 year old friend. And what is your sloppy wife doing allowing her 10-year-old son to hang out with a 14-year-old? I'm allowed to comment on that and say that that's irresponsible. That's not me attacking the child. That's me attacking your sloppy wife's parenting. My son went over to a neighbor's house. We lived out in the countryside. He lived down a dirt road. My son went over there to watch a movie. While they were there, one of the boys he was watching the movie with, who was a few years older than him, uh, I think he was 13 or 14 at the time. He was okay. 14. Uh, stole his parents' keys to a Bronco, put my son in the, the Bronco with him. This is a lack of good judgment on sloppy Rachel's part because why would you allow your 10-year-old son to go over to a house of a 14-year-old? A 10-year-old and a 14-year-old view the world completely differently. These are critical developmental ages. A 10-year-old is in elementary school and a 14-year-old can be in high school. It is irresponsible and it doesn't mean that I'm attacking the children. In fact, I'm defending them, if anything. I'm saying that they didn't deserve what happened to them. Seriously, what is a teen driver doing with a 10-year-old in his car that he's not even related to? <coughs> so I want you guys to listen to him call through this and uh, listen to how he describes the story. The police showed up that night after we had called them because we could not find him. He did not come home. And nobody at the house knew where he was, where he was at. So we called the police. The police found the wreck, and they came, and they let us know that he had died on the scene. I will never forget, ever, ever, <coughs> the horrific shriek that my wife let out. I've never heard anything like it before that. And I hope I never hear anything like it again as long as I live. So obviously this is very tragic and it sounds very sad when he's explaining it, but it's very manipulative of him to claim that this is his kid, like it's his biological kid or like he raised him when he didn't. This is from baby daddy number two. He married Sloppy in December of 2012. The article on this accident happened December of 2015. He was only married to her for three years at this point. So for him to sit here and pretend that this is his kid to garner more sympathy and to use it as a tool to deflect criticism against their parenting is really disgusting. This is his wife's son. So he goes on to talk about the case and this is what he says. And, and everybody in that room was fucking enraged until my wife spoke. And what she did was she went and spoke to the judge and spoke to the prosecutor. There was no jury there. He was guilty. Right? <laughs> And she made a plea for mercy. What she said was, please, don't turn one tragedy into two. Please don't destroy this kid's life as well. He made a horrible mistake, and we can all acknowledge he made a horrible mistake. But please don't destroy his life too. <clears throat> and she went on from there. And that whole room 
The whole room was in tears, including the prosecutor and the judge. And everyone clapped. So he talks about how his wife is so merciful. She chose mercy. And then it goes into the civil suit, right? She chose mercy, but then watch this. The, the civil case comes up. And the day of the civil trial, the other family declared bankruptcy so that they didn't have to go to civil court. So we withdrew the civil suit to bring it up again after the bankruptcy was settled. And after the bankruptcy was finally settled, and it was time for me to bring the civil case back, um, I told my lawyer not to. Wow, how generous that you didn't sue people that were literally bankrupt. How merciful. So is it really about mercy or because they were literally bankrupt? Because <clears throat> what would have been the point? Yeah, what would have been the point? Because they were broke. At that point, there was nothing just about the situation. There was no justice in the situation. If I had taken everything these people had in restitution, it wouldn't have meant anything. It would have just been petty revenge. Don't you love the way he frames it? Like, you guys had the civil suit in the first place, and you withdrew it because they were broke. But he's trying to frame it as if it's about mercy when it's not. And again, with the story where it sounds like, yeah, and then everyone clapped... You can't believe anything he says. He might be telling the truth. He might not be. But given the way he frames things and he's framing this like they're so merciful when the family is just broke, it goes to show that he just can't stop lying and will continue to gaslight. Just some fucking idiot on the internet who wants to hurt uh, parents through horrific means of attacking their children. Yeah, just demonize me for attacking your children. That's all the video was about. When it was clearly about criticizing them and them not following through with their Christian lifestyle and living a lifestyle that conflicts with their religion and how neither of them are traditional at all and yet they throw stones at other people. Basically, this video is full of lies and gaslighting to try to demonize me. When we have the receipts, I provide receipts for everything I talk about. I explain why I come to certain conclusions and I do the best with the information I have and I do my due diligence and he's trying to make it seem like I don't and he does so by retroactively lying and reframing things in ways that aren't accurate for example him saying that I caused his wife's daughter to get harassed when his sloppy wife is the reason that anybody can find her social media in the first place so it's absolutely ridiculous that people are saying that I attacked children it was never about his children being attacked they're not even his kids the ones he's talking about they're his wife's son and daughter it was about their parenting and their hypocrisy and them trying to throw stones at other people when they don't practice what they preach as traditional Christians, when they do nothing traditional and hardly anything Christian. I encourage you guys that instead of just believing the person that has a track record of lying and rewriting history, that you actually look at the receipts that I provide, why I explain, why I come to certain conclusions and the things that I show on screen in the previous videos. And you can come to your own conclusion that way by looking at what I actually said and what actually happened and not just what he's saying and what he's lying about. Ugh, you know, unlike Addict Andy, I don't have cigarettes to puff my way through this, but thank you guys for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.